Hi, I'm Jose Piña from eMite, and in this video I'm going to show you how to test the TCP throughput performance for the downlink stream of a device, of this device, this smartphone, using our E500 medium size reverberation chamber. And for the source, we will use an external AP inside a shielding box, which can be fully controlled by our software using an USB to serial cable connected to the control PC and RF cables connected from the box to the front panel of the chamber. During the measurement, the path loss between the DUT and AP will be increased so you can see both the real and theoretical throughput curves going down and also monitor in real time important information such as the RSSI, the signal noise rate and the modulation code schemes both for uplink and downlink. Also by activating the DUT monitor in the software the system will collect the temperature and battery levels of the device during the measurement. So let's go to the PC and see how everything is configured. For OTA TCP UDP throughput testing, click on Traffic MIMO measurements and then enter MIMO OTA TCP UDP throughput. In the Source tab, an internal or external device can be selected. The E500 is provided with an internal AP, but also allows the user to connect an external device which can be fully controlled by the software. Select the external AP to be used and click on Connect. Once connected, click on Configure button to enter the AP settings. An SSID can be specified and a DHCP can be activated so that IP addresses are automatically provided. In Properties, different WLAN standards can be selected along the frequency band, channel bandwidth and channel. Obviously, this feature depends on the connected AP brand and model. Depending on the selected standard, different number of antennas and modulation code schemes can be configured. In this example demonstration, we will use MCS Auto, so the DUT will switch from a higher to a lower modulation as long as the path loss increases in an automated manner. The war interval can also be set to 400 or 800 nanoseconds. Click Apply to save the configuration for any future use. In the Scenario tab, a test scenario has to be selected between free space, free space with round plane phantom, beside head, beside head and right hand, and beside head and left hand. These scenarios are pre-calibrated in-house, however, custom scenarios can also be created by the test engineer using a vector network analyzer. Since we are using an external AP, an external losses tab is available to calibrate and take into account not only the external RF cables connected the shielding box to the chamber, but also the losses of the shielding box. Now, once everything is set, in the test tab, the user can set up a list of tests and confirm a batch in which each test can be individually configured. The configured set of tests can be saved as a batch for future uses and of course, a saved batch can also be loaded by clicking on the input button. Double click to enter the test properties. In the source tab, the properties of the WLAN standard can be configured again. In the parameter tab, the testing mode can be configured to uplink, where data is transmitted from DUT to AP, or downlink, where DUT receives data from the AP. Note that the GI software will automatically perform these changes from test to test while doing the batch testing. The transport protocol to be used during the measurement can be TCP or UDP. Other parameters such as number of parallel streams, TCP window size, buffer length and bandwidth limit can be set. 
and in this tab the user can enable the turntable movement during the test, which is recommended in order to improve repeatability. In the measurement tab, the initial, final and step pathless values for the throughput curve can be specified. To calculate the final measured throughput in each decreasing pathless value, the system will collect throughput samples along a specific period of time, which is the partial run time, and then obtain a time average final value. Each time this period is concluded, the average throughput value calculated is added to the final car, so that real-time monitoring is observed. To save testing time, the cap parameter can be used. The cap is a percentage of the maximum throughput at which the test is stopped and moved to a next sample. For TCP throughput testing, the initial ramp-up time for TCP stability is also accounted for at our system. The initial ramp-up time can be set by the user. During this time, throughput samples won't be taken into account. Since TCP ramp-up can also occur just after changing the path loss, the user can also configure a step ramp-up time. High DUT temperatures may have a negative impact on throughput measurement. In order to avoid high temperatures, a break time can also be configured, so the system will wait from test to test till the device recovers a low temperature. This is particularly useful when configuring long test batches where DUTs may overheat, or when performing repeatability tests in which the temperature conditions also have to be repeated. Another very interesting feature is the traffic monitor. When activated, it will show in real time the RSSI, signal to noise radio, modulation schemes, and physical data rates both for downlink and uplink. Monitoring the DUT temperature and battery levels is also possible with the DUT monitor. This filter will collect temperature and battery level information from the DUT and report it in the resolve files for more accurate DUT performance analysis. For evaluating the results, a pass-fail criteria can be used at user convenience. This feature allows the user to define a pass-fail zone on the testing graph. The test will be passed in case every throughput point drops in the green area. The automated report will evaluate the test result against the set criteria and provide a pass or fail final result for the test. Finally, in the DUT tab, the name, hardware and software version of the DUT can be specified for a better knowledge of what's being tested. At this point, the user has to introduce the DUT inside the chamber, attach it to the test network and run the MIMO Geek Client UE app. This software at the UE will show the IP address in use and the MAC. The MIMO Geek Client software it's available for the most important operating systems such as Android, iOS, Mac, Tizen, Linux and Windows Universal Platform among others. Once the UE is attached to the test network, close the chamber door and concentrate on the control PC. Type the client IP address and click the check connection button to verify the link. If the connection is successful, Click the RAM button to start the measurement. During measurements, the user can monitor the throughput at the current path loss during the partial RAM time, and also how the throughput curve is painted. The average curve of the current throughput is painted in green, and the physical throughput is averaged in blue. As expected, in the traffic monitor both RSSI and SNR values will decrease as the path loss increases. Inside the chamber, turntable and stewards move continuously during the test in order to improve repeatability.
Once the batch of tests is finished, complete the device information and save the measurements to obtain the test report files in HTML, Excel and TXT formats. In the report files, information of the device under test and the source can be found, a summary of all test batches and the measurement details that includes the final average measurement and the DUT monitor result showing the temperature and battery levels. At the bottom of the HTML file, a picture of the final graph is depicted. Testing WLAM throughput including 802.11a C standard has ever been easier. Check out our white papers and technical specifications at our webpage or YouTube channel and start designing your future with EMI test systems. Your WLAM throughput testing wishes may be true.